Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Faces and FinOps podcast powered by ProsperOps. The Faces and FinOps podcast is about highlighting thought leaders in the cloud financial management space and their insights on how they're making an impact not only within their organization, but the broader FinOps community. Today's guest is Wade Peel. He's a senior FinOps success manager at AWS. Now, Wade has been helping customers identify and implement cloud financial management opportunities over six years with AWS customers facing experience. Wade has helped both commercial and public sector AWS customers to implement CFM best practices. Please join me in welcoming Wade to the show. Wade, thanks for joining me. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So Wade, let's kick things off. How about you give the audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, well, as you mentioned, I've been at AWS for a little over six years now. I'm based in the Seattle area. I live in Renton, Washington, or if you're from the area, Renton, Washington, uh, which is just south of the city. So lived here my entire life. Um, and uh, as you can probably tell, I'm pretty into the outdoors. Um, and I you know, love the Pacific Northwest for that reason. Wade, you mentioned FinOps, CFM. Is there a difference between the two? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I was meeting with one of our partners earlier this year and they asked me, why does AWS not like the term FinOps? And I just kind of laughed. I was like, yeah, that's not it at all. So, you know, to, to help clear some of that up. So I was in a FinOps background before I got to AWS, financial operations. So I think that term, you know, can be used really broadly. Um, the way I think about FinOps is that um, it's a it's a process within cloud financial management. And when I think about FinOps, I think about um, it's more about the creating that culture of, of uh, cloud financial management and spreading that culture throughout the organization. And it might encompass things like um, measurement and accountability where we're understanding our cost and driving ownership back to development teams. Wait, let's talk about a little bit of your team. Like you're underneath the AWS Optics team, correct? That's right. And what are you guys doing or what are you responsible for? Yeah, so the Optics team is one of many cloud financial management or FinOps teams that we have. And so Optics is focused on some specific industry verticals, which is really nice because it allows us to be more deeply embedded with our customers and be more uh, not quite one to one. Well, some of our folks are one to one with customers, uh, but have a lot more dedicated relationship. Are you working with the new Kudos dashboards at all? Oh yeah, they were definitely working with the Kudos dashboards, and then you know we even we'll, we might help customers customize those. So I was on a you know meeting earlier today with the rest of the Optics team, and we were reading out some of the successes that we've had with some customers. And you know one of our team members is working with a customer, and we they have a bunch of different uh, dashboards within QuickSights, and they were working on an integration process of helping to make that more streamlined on the customer side, where they have all these different dashboards, and how do we get more aggregated views of that? What is the best slice and dice for the customer so that they can, you know, drive more ownership with their business units ultimately? Are you working with the new Kudos dashboards at all? Oh, yeah. They were definitely working with the Kudos dashboards. And then, you know, we even we'll, we might help customers customize those. So I was on a you know, meeting earlier today with the rest of the optics team, and we were reading out some of the successes that we've had with some customers. And you know, one of our team members is working with a customer and we they have a bunch of different uh, dashboards within QuickSites. And they were working on an integration process of helping to make that more streamlined on the customer side where they have all these different dashboards and how do we get more aggregated views of that. And what is the best slice and dice for the customer so that they can, you know, drive more ownership with their business units ultimately. Are you working with the new Kudos dashboards at all? Oh, yeah. They were definitely working with the Kudos dashboards. And then, you know, we even we'll, we might help customers customize those. So I was on a you know, meeting earlier today with the rest of the optics team, and we were reading out some of the successes that we've had with some customers. And you know, one of our team members is working with a customer and we they have a bunch of different uh, dashboards within QuickSites. And they were working on an integration process of helping to make that more streamlined on the customer side where they have all these different dashboards. And how do we get more aggregated views of that? And what is the best slice and dice for the customer so that they can, you know, drive more ownership with their business units ultimately. Are you working with the new Kudos dashboards at all? 
Oh yeah, they were definitely working with the Kudos dashboards, and then you know we even we'll, we might help customers customize those. So I was on a you know meeting earlier today with the rest of the optics team, and we were reading out some of the successes that we've had with some customers. And you know one of our team members is working with a customer, and we they have a bunch of different uh, dashboards within QuickSights, and they were working on an integration process of helping to make that more streamlined on the customer side, where they have all these different dashboards, and how do we get more aggregated views of that? And, what is the best slice and dice for the customer so that they can, you know, drive more ownership with their business units ultimately. Are you working with the new Kudos dashboards at all? Oh yeah, they were definitely working with the Kudos dashboards and then, you know, we even we'll, we might help customers customize those. So I was on a you know, meeting earlier today with the rest of the optics team and we were reading out some of the successes that we've had with some customers and you know, one of our team members is working with a customer and we they have a bunch of different uh, dashboards within QuickSights and they were working on an integration process of helping to make that more streamlined on the customer side where they have all these different dashboards and how do we get more aggregated views of that what is the best slice and dice for the customer so that they can, you know, drive more ownership with their business units ultimately. Now, wait, can you help our audience understand what are the Kudos dashboards? Yeah. So some folks probably are familiar with, say, like Cost Explorer, which is our like out of the box uh, cost and usage uh, analysis tool, which Cost Explorer is great for pretty much all customers. But if we need more ability to customize the views, uh, say, you know, in Cost Explorer, you don't have access to the payer account, but you have like three or four accounts that are underneath you. You might have to go into each of those accounts individually and view, you know, the recommendations. So what's really cool about the cost intelligence dashboard and some of the other dashboards that we have in quick sites is you can create more customized views uh, that are more relevant now wait we're talking about automation and things but let's talk about ai and i know it's the hottest term right now everybody wants to talk generative ai but do you see ai impacting fin ops at all throughout the implementation throughout the journey Absolutely. So pretty much every single executive briefings conference that I'm part of with the customer, they're always asking about AI. And I love to sit in on those conversations. I've been fortunate the last two EBCs that I've done, the session right before me was about AI. And I got to sit in and, and learn about that from some of the you know AWS experts that we have. I think it's it's definitely one of the hottest topics. And you know, one of the ways that we, we might think about that is just a new technology, right? It's part of the ecosystem of, uh, of the cloud, right? And it's a new technology. So if we went from like EC2 to then like containers or, or we go to serverless technology, these are new technologies that are enabling us to do more with less um, and be more agile. AI is gonna just be like another step function improvement. It's like off the charts compared to some of these other technologies that we have. This one's a real serious one. And the reason I say it's serious is because this is gonna be some advice that you have learned throughout your career of working not only in FinOps, but in Bowie, is that what piece of advice would you give customers who are trying to start out in their FinOps journey? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, and, I, and I definitely work with a lot of customers that are just starting out. And one of the things that I'll say that I almost always do with these customers when I'm talking with them is overwhelm them. Um, maybe intentionally so to some degree, because I want to like wake them up to, hey, this is a function that we you know should be developing as FinOps. Uh, but also like I try not to overwhelm them too much. And so I would say if you're just starting your FinOps journey, there's so much information out there, uh, especially to when like I started six years ago, we we didn't have like the tools in Cost Explorer that we do now. We didn't have these dashboards, all this stuff. So like, don't feel like you need to adopt all of it at once. Try to think about what can we do in the next six months? Because it, I've seen a lot of customers get analysis paralysis and we've, we've showed them all of these things that they can do. And I go follow up with them six months later and I'm saying, okay, what are we doing? And it's, we're back at, you know, exactly where we were six months ago. And, and I think that's really easy to do when there's so much going on, so many competing priorities. And so it's all about what can we do in the next six months? Let's pick some things that are really actionable that we can go do. There's always low hanging fruit to go grab especially when we're just getting started. So just go and try. Uh, and if you fail, that's okay, because you learn from those failures and then try again and uh, you know adapt from that. So don't get stuck in that analysis paralysis stage.